Welcome to the 127th episode of News Dump, where we run through the hottest topics in the Lewis County news scene and discuss. I'm local man Aaron Vantile, joined today by Chronicle Editor-in-Chief Eric Schwartz and Chronicle Assistant Editor, question mark, Isabel Vanderstoop. And we're joined in spirit by sponsors Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. Would you two like to discuss your editorial partnership? Oh, I thought you wanted to talk about The Roof Doctor, and I always want to talk about The Roof Doctor. <laughs> uh, who doesn't love to talk about The Roof Doctor? I like to talk about them much more than myself. I don't know why it feels like we're announcing your, your promotion when everyone in Lewis County has seen it, liked it, and commented and <laughs> said deserved. <laughs> I've never seen a post with more than 500, we'll say 500 likes on Facebook that didn't have one angry face, one laughing face, <laughs> nothing. It was a universally uh, celebrated promotion and for good reason. You do an awesome job. So, you. Did you respond to the post on Facebook with just hashtag blessed? No, I didn't share it because I would just have to like deal with the same comments but actually be like a obligated to reply to them all which it's very kind i just don't really want to like say thank you to every person who says something about it because there there were a lot but um would have really helped with our engagement isabel i'm sorry <laughs> just joking that makes total sense <laughs> i i just don't want to be like gloaty i guess but um i'm very very excited about the new position i'll still be doing reporting but i have like added copy editing responsibilities and um, might do a couple, like might do a column or something. We're trying to still figure it out as we go along, but it'll be Aaron fun. says I should teach you to do everything so you could put the paper out yourself. Yeah. If you had to, is that something I mean, that interests you? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. That's Aaron's what. still, I mean, he's been working here, what, 15 years and you still can't do it. You still need me. Uh, is it, 50, is it only 15? I don't know. It's like 17. Whatever. You still can't put out a paper by yourself. I can't too. Have you? Yeah. A whole paper? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think okay. happens when you're not here? Uh, Nikki. But, mm -hmm. Anyways, mm -hmm. congratulations, oh. Isabel. Thank you. Uh, intern to editor in less than two years? Yeah. Is that accurate? So March will be your second anniversary here? Yes, that's awesome. right. Well deserved. We're Thank lucky you. to have you. I appreciate it a lot. I'm very, We're gonna I'm going to use lucky a photo of here. you on this podcast just for the popularity. Oh, gosh. Just for the likes. <laughs> or you had Jared send me some. So, also, <laughs> getting into the news. Uh, the, the Polar Plunge is coming up on January 28th at Mayfield Lake at 8 a.m. You can join by just showing up, or you can find Special Olympics Washington on Facebook and Twitter and sign up with the team. Is it Mayfield Lake or Lake Mayfield? It's Mayfield Lake. Lake. Is Mayfield it Mayfield Lake? Lake? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You did that last year. I did. Uh, do you do you endorse it? Pretty cold. Yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. It was it was cold. It was sometimes it's good just to push yourself and do something that makes you a little bit uncomfortable. I just remember my camera was malfunctioning. I don't know why Jared couldn't be there. He was off doing something for like one out of the fifty two weeks of the year. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, last second, I figured out I had all my settings wrong, so it worked out. But the most memorable thing was stopping by Lewis County's best bar on the way back. Frosties? We did. We stopped mm -hmm. by Frosty's and breakfast, Frosties. and it was phenomenal. A great breakfast. We also what learned that Frosty's, not a sponsor, is immune to inflation. Yeah. The prices oh, yeah. are all oh, quite yeah. reasonable. Uh, you asked what we had. I had, I think, Eggs Benedict, but with bacon. I've never had breakfast there. I phenomenal. ought to. Good breakfast. Threw down a, a Bloody Mary or two. Love Saw some guy you. carting his kids out after eating breakfast. Asked for two sc double screwdrivers to go. You're like, <laughs> I got in the lake for charity. I can get drunk at 10 a.m. I mean, uh, you don't have to get in the... I've, I've done it without getting in the lake, <laughs> just to be clear. Uh, anyway, yeah, that's coming up. It's a, it's a good event. And, you know, if you're... Like to like to get cold. If this is the sports podcast, I would drop in our AmeriCool heating and cooling ad here. It's not though, but it is not. It would be intriguing though to have a, a crossover episode. Yeah, bring in Alec and Josh. Have them talk about the news. We talk oh, about the be sports. Not great. <laughs> it would seem like a funny idea at the time, but then once you go back and listen to it, you'd be like, "This is awful." I don't know. It would it would not be great. <laughs> I never enjoyed crossover episodes of anything, to be honest. Alec and Josh know a lot about what's going on in the sports world, and I do not think they know everything going on in, in the news world and vice versa. But I when read I almost every sports story, so I have a pretty good working knowledge. Oh, yeah? Who beat Napavine earlier this week? Toodle. Wow, you don't have I read them. Who read, led read Toodle? Sports. Uh, who led Toodle? Yeah. I don't even remember Zach that Zach Swanson scored 37. It's not a local I, school. I remember because at the beginning of the season, I said my money was on Morton White Pass over Tudor Lake in the district finals. I wrote that on the board. Alec and Josh roundly mocked me. Well, 
There's plenty of other stuff we could mock you for. Yeah, that's true. News items. First up, Centralia officers use alternative pursuit tactic to stop eluding driver of stolen vehicle. There was a stolen car driving around Centralia. The police saw it, but they didn't have the state's cause to chase it. And it kept coming back and taunting them. They were getting pretty upset about it. But Chief of Police Stacey Denham, friend of the podcast, was prepared a while back. He saw this coming and invested in some pursuit eliminator spike strips which are smaller, less aggressive strips than the ones they throw out on the freeway, like, you know, the ones they threw out. Did the sheriff's office throw them out and then run over them last year? I think so, yeah. Okay. Anyway, Denham spent $3,000 on these to purchase basically at least one for each of the department's cars. And this podcaster thinks maybe they should get two because they work. They got a report that the car was stopped over by Alder Street by the Pepper Tree Motel. Imagine somebody in a stolen car being by the Pepper Tree Motel. So an officer snuck around and slipped one of these bad boys under the back tire. The guy fled slowly to Rochester with a flat tire. And some j buddies just happened to be there, and they rounded him up. Quote from Denham says, In my opinion, it was just really good police work, trying to follow the laws. But this is the extent of the things that we're trying to do. This one just happened to work out beautifully. And it just also happened to work out that the preparations that we've been trying to do actually paid off in this case. And it may pay off again in the future. Uh, I appreciate the Denim's response to this was to just say, hey, we made it work instead of doing a whole song and dance about the state won't let me run this stolen car off the road into a nursing home like God intended. Well, that's a gross simplification. I didn't step on your bits, though. You didn't. Yeah. Go ahead. Go, yeah, now it is your turn. You're very well, sensitive bits. I, it is your turn. I think the Centralia Police Department has been really uh, positive about those laws since they passed in trying to just say like, we're going to try to figure out how to make things work and be creative. I, I applaud them for that. And, um, yeah, this is a cool example of that. Uh, Um, and it's not like they're saying, we think these are great. It's not like they're saying we totally endorse all of it. It's just that, you know, we're still going to do our jobs no matter what. And our job is to try to keep people safe. Yeah. They're just saying, Hey, we are here to work. You want them to grin and bear it. Yeah. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah, absolutely. What, what are your thoughts on the matter? I, that, that's fine. I think that's admirable. I think that they're more than free to to still rightfully advocate for their profession. Um, we had a story from the Spokesman Review in last week where a passenger in a truck called 911 at midnight because they were being chased by the cops. <laughs> so they called the cops to say they're, they're, you know, they're violating my rights, and they mm-hmm. forwarded that call to the cops that were chasing them. Um, and if you, if, if you don't think that's ridiculous, then, I mean... People do think that they can game the system now. You can drive by cops in a stolen car, and all you got to do is gun it, and they can't stop it. There's mm-hmm. things that need to be fixed. So, Grin and yeah. Barrett's fine, but they can continue to complain about some of this nonsense. Yeah, like that rule against, you know, you're not allowed to have sex on duty in your patrol car <laughs> with somebody who's not your wife with your body cam what on. What a pivot. What the? Who would have thought? <laughs> that was a great story. From Tacoma, yes. Uh, he was fired. <laughs> I know. Anyway, <sighs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Back to your cop hating ways. Uh, no, I, I just applauded the Centralia Police Department Did for their good work. Did you see that story we recently ran? I don't know. I think it might have been from the Colombian, and it was like about police. Yeah, yeah. It was like Vancouver sheriff not going to see charges or whatever for this certain thing, and it was by Jessica Procop. Mm-hmm. Is that <laughs> her, like P R O K O P? Yeah. Wow. What I was a, like, what a byline. Have you never seen her byline before? No. No. Oh. She has a name ironically. Well, you stuff. usually don't. Just, you don't usually, do anything. You usually don't run bylines for Wire. I run the name of the paper, yeah. yeah. I tend to do that. That's true. I run them online, though, because I figure online it's different. Yeah. I don't know why. I read the paper in print most of the time, actually, nowadays. Do you want to discuss the memes Brandon's been sending us about law no, enforcement? No, man. Okay. I don't. Uh, Next news item. (laughs) Lewis County government likely to ban TikTok on its devices. Heeding the warning of the FBI, the commissioners are likely to pass a resolution tomorrow that bans the use or download of the TikTok app or website on county devices or networks. Noting that the app is owned by Chinese company, quote, ByteDance. The resolution notes the security concern of China catching wind of those emails to Eric Martin, where Sean Swope asks, do you think Lindsey Pollack really likes me? (laughs) Oh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two commissioners, Pollock and Scott Brummer, expressed support for the resolution, which will be entertained in the county's weekly business meeting tomorrow. The third commissioner, Sean Swope, while not reached for comment before the Chronicles press deadline, was the one who brought forward 
who brought forward his concern with TikTok, Pollock said. All the debate over this, my only thing is, why would they allow it in the, the first place? Like, do you really need... I'm sure there's probably one or two, like, niche positions over there, like PR or marketing or something, but yeah. why would you need TikTok otherwise? Why uh, would you, you just ban it? That was one of the to... things that Lindsay Pollock said in her response was just, like it's already something we don't utilize. And if there is any concern, it's better to be safe than sorry. It was basically the quote I got from her. So I don't think it's like they're highly nervous about it. I think it's just exactly what you're thinking is like, why would we even have that? Or Facebook or Twitter. Yeah. For most, that reason. most like government agencies issued cell phones for things like you can't have Twitter or Facebook on them. Well, I feel like they're for County officials. They're, might be use in having those kinds of for things some, just for, for outreach. Sure. Like public work says, yeah, here we're doing the chip seal over on this road today. You know, I, I kind of think it's, it's more gray than that, but I understand in general, you don't really want people to be using their work phone for personal stuff. Here's the real question. If you had to choose one County employee to be very active on TikTok, who would it be? Ross McDowell? I was just about to say that. You're going to say Ross McDowell? Yeah. Graham, perhaps? I was going to say, well, Graham would be great, but yeah. I would say Warren McLeod. Oh, yeah, Warren McLeod Doing would his be own really voiceovers. Yeah, yeah, but, like, wh- he couldn't really make a lot of content. That oh, he was- could make content. <laughs> <laughs> he could make content. I mean, he, it's just, like, private medical information that he's dealing with. Well, it wouldn't be like doing a TikTok every time he came across a dead body. Just, well, like, tips like for not job? becoming one of the dead bodies. Oh, Like, okay. he'll issue press releases occasionally that are like, hey, don't forget your life jacket if you went out there and just did right. one of those. Yeah, that's a good choice. Anyway, yeah, that's that's what I'd go with. Warren. Warren. Um, <laughs> uh, next news item. This one is not doesn't have huge local impact, but it was elderly man unscathed after crashing small plane in Thurston County. This is an Olympian story, but an 83 year old man was practically unharmed after crashing his plane near Yelm on Thursday. The man has been playing for 50 years, and this was his third crash. And of course, we have to say it Washington State. Uh. (laughs) Damn it. Interrupting your own bits now. (sighs) I know. Why don't you just get YouTube Premium, man? I, why would I do that? I, I so was, this embarrassing uh, situation could have been prevented. I was oh. going to say after you said not a huge local impact and then you said practically unharmed, I was going to be like, wow, you're, why, you're why right. There the wasn't agency. one, you know? Me, my man, you, know, you know what it is. Here, but only one of you. Can't pass up the opportunity. You can't pass up the opportunity. First one to talk gets to stay With the long the clip, though. I, I had the shorter <laughs> clip. Queued up. Are we just gonna watch the whole movie? I might. Yeah. Is this like a copyright issue? Longer than you expect. If I pull that off, will you die? It would be extremely painful. <laughs> You're a big guy. For you. <laughs> We'll just cut it off there, but it was the crashing this plane. You didn't even include the crashing this plane. You know what? At this point, we've just run it into the ground. We've crashed this plane, much like this elderly man. Careful with the we there. (laughs) Yeah, Mr. Don't step on my bits. Yes, you're stepping on the podcast. Stepping all over your own bits. Uh, You know what? We need to put we need to put Bane back at the front of the podcast, though. Yeah, we should get Bane back on the board. Though I like what Isabel worked up. So what did Isabel work up? You didn't see the audio she sent? Oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, okay good. I have been thinking about that a lot. <laughs> it's like, I don't know why, it just lives rent free in my head. Jim Walsh's voice is just so, like, hilariously booming. You He's know? booming. I have said for years that he speaks, do we want to get this one in now? That he speaks like somebody talking, he looks like somebody who speaks in all caps. Yeah, oh, yeah, he does. Do you yeah. want to go through those now, or should we wait for him? Um, just, do the, just do the Jim Walsh one now. Uh, which one was that? The oh, that's the first one. All right, here we go. Are you here for the common good? Yes. yes. Are you here to peaceably yes. assemble? Yes. yes. Well, God bless you. And he says that in some form in every one of his speeches. I thought that was going to be the new podcast intro. It's a good call to the listeners. Heavens no. <laughs> Why? Why not? Jared uh, and I were talking about it would be great if you compiled every time he said that and like pitch it in different ways so it was harmonized. Oh yeah, that would be cool. Yeah. 
We could do it. Uh, next news item. Yeah, we could. Um, gathered church food boxes reach hundreds of people each week. The Centralia Church delivers between 600 to 800 boxes of food to households throughout the greater Lewis County area. This is just a story about all their work, and it's good to remind people who try to villainize Gather for some of their other work uh, that this is the same organization who delivers food to hungry people with homes. Uh, Patty Howard gave a presentation to the Board of Health, which, once again, I'm, I'm forced to remind you, is just the county commissioners. Anyway... Her presentation included that uh, we got a message from a woman in Bellingham whose mom lives in the Packwood Randall area, and she said her mom is on a very fixed income with limited mobility. She was absolutely overjoyed one day when she opened her box and there was a cabbage. She had not had fresh produce in so long that she was overjoyed by a cabbage. Uh, Props to Patty Howard for presenting to the Board of Health. After one of its members loudly proclaimed she was his last pick for the health advisory board spot. I still don't get why that had to be said. <laughs> I, you know what? Yeah. It's just worth mentioning. No. Like if our least favorite person I think came lots in of here, things I don't say. Maybe you should start thinking saying stuff right now. No, I, th- I think Eric's saying, I don't know why that had to be said out loud in the meeting. I don't yes, think he's yes, saying, I don't know why you said it. Oh, yeah, you saying, knew I was going to yeah, say Yeah, no, I, I just found it to be highly insulting for yeah. like no reason. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. Any any comments on the Gather Church? Uh, you know, I th- you know I think the world of Gather Church. So I um yeah, they just came and presented to the um, Board of Health, which I thought was a really cool thing. I think the county is probably going to meet up with them again sometime soon and go over more of the like homeless services stuff that they do, um, which I think is a good step forward. But I just was reminded of all the different things they do and was like, we haven't done a story on how many boxes they're delivering each week. And it's such an enormous number. I mean, you just wouldn't even guess that, you know? And so, yeah, I thought just bringing awareness to food insecurity and to the program, to people who might not know about it. I was really happy to be able to do this story. Our next item, Alaska woman charged with 30 felonies for alleged mail theft. It's a wild ride. This one was crazy. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, They were filed in Lewis County Superior Court Friday against Amber Ingram, a.k.a. Amber Rushton, the 40-year-old Alaska woman accused of stealing a substantial amount of mail. The prosecutor's office filed 30 charges, uh, one count of first-degree possession of stolen property, 16 counts of possession of stolen mail, and 13 counts of of second-degree identity theft. Sheriff's Office personnel found over 315 pieces of stolen mail in her car and 17 to 19 garbage bags full of stolen mail in her house, as well as a box of stolen license plates with attached registration, but she's still out on bail, so hide your packages, hide your letters. (laughs) Can somebody walk me through, do you think you guys have a little more on this? Like, she was caught driving around mailbox to mailbox and stealing mail. She... What happened at first, I I don't know everything since she was uh, brought into custody the first time, but what happened first is she was driving what appeared to be like an old van that might have been used for mail at one point. Like it had a light on the top of it, but it wasn't Mm -hmm. working. And it was like a very rundown car to the point where somebody saw her like checking mailboxes at I think four in the morning and called the cops and was like, that's definitely not normal. And then they pulled her over and said like, what are you doing? And she said, I'm delivering flyers. And they were like, but what about all that mail? And she was like, oh, I'm just making sure people don't get junk mail. Like as if that's allowed to. And then like, yeah, they, they uncovered like a lot of mail Then I think she, I'm pretty sure what happened was she got arrested and then let out on bail when her dad was taking care of her dog and saw a bunch more mail in the house and then called the police and said, like, that wasn't even the half of it. And then they arrested her again. I guess the surprising thing, and I'm I'm sure there's a legit reason for this, but like you find her with all this mail in her car. Did they go check the house like immediately? Like, I feel like they should have. I think so. I okay. want to say so, but I can't remember. I can't, I, I'd have to go back and look. I'm sorry. I know when the deputies did go to her house, she didn't answer the door. And they oh, yeah, she was presumably had a warrant and went in and she was like hiding in her room, which kind of surprised me on the bail front because they didn't. I mean, she showed up for court and that's usually one of the 
things that yeah. the judge uses, but still you think like that was resisting the investigation yeah. um, at least a little bit, but she's out. It actually started sooner if you had caught at least one post on Facebook where um, she, I think she tr- like has a bit of an, she wants to be an influencer like so many people these days. Go on. Um, I, and she had posted, which, which she had posted apps? She, the, what I know of is Facebook, but she uh-huh. had posted a video of herself with these very unique earrings and a resident of Lewis County was like, that's those are like one of a kind earrings that I specially purchased from like an an artist. <laughs> like yeah. there's no there's not a second one. Um, so her post was going Lewis County viral, as they say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I saw that. People one. were naming her and tagging her and everything else. Um, so it's pretty wild to see that on social media one day, and then the next you see her arrested with a van full of mail, allegedly. Allegedly, yeah. That's a lot of mail. It is a lot of mail. But Seventeen to nineteen bags full. It's also like I think it's a bail most of the time is chosen by threat to community safety stuff. And true. While it's not like while it's very disruptive and not good, it's it's not like people's lives were put in danger because of it necessarily. Well, it might have been, I guess, for some. But yeah, what if there was medicine in yeah. there? Yeah. No, I guess it, it might have been. But it's she was not actively trying to like hurt somebody and I think that's probably why the bail was kinda low. She also had a box of license plates and red with registrations attached to them. Which is yeah, intriguing. you just wonder what's what's going on there, you know? Yeah, the whole thing. It's uh, mm. it's wild. But the thirty felonies are all punishable by. Look, let's see. Uh, I don't actually have that in front of me, Emily. I think they're class C felonies. Is it like five or ten years each? I think so. So I think uh, if you fast forward to the prosecution in this case, you're probably going to end up with some people that are upset. They're like, "There's just thirty felonies," and she, you know, might end up five to ten years or less. Yeah, running concurrent, and they usually if you do, do like a, a plea deal. But what a mess! And the deputies literally having to identify people and send their mail to them one by one. Yeah, that's such a ugh, it's so frustrating. But um, they on Cronline, we do have the number that you're supposed to call. Um, they said it will expedite the process if people contact us and say their mail has been stolen. So if that's you, do so. Three six zero seven four eight nine two eight six. Wouldn't it be ironic if she gets sent to prison and the prison is one that manufactures license plates? <laughs> I guess, yeah. <laughs> She's like, ah, here we are again. Or she gets sent to the mail room. <laughs> uh, it's just such a weird crime. Like, it's you're, you're just out, you're exposed the entire time you're doing it, and you're going to people's homes where they can. there's a chance they're going to see you every single time. It's just, it's, it's I just feel like with a case like this, applying like normal logic isn't always like no, the right. best way to understand yeah. it. I don't know. Uh, you use the word exposed. Do you want to discuss any other social media? Um, no, I do not. Regarding do, this case? I do not. Okay. One more news item. Centralia approves Chehalis' decant facility use and interlocal agreement. The Centralia City Council has agreed to let Chehalis use Centralia's regional decant facility to deposit and process material Collected by street sweepers and vacuum trucks. This is over on Reynolds behind the street shop. So Centralia finally gets the, hey, buddy, call from Chehalis. I hope they responded with, well, 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 now you need something from us. Uh, In return, Chehalis offered Centralia 10 free passes to the Gale and Carolyn Shaw aquatic experience, quote, because we know you don't have a pool, LOL. I can't believe of all the news items that we've had that made it in. Yeah, you know, I, I just think there's something <laughs> yeah. something in Chehalis calling Centralia to be like, hey, do you mind if we dump our trash at your decant facility? Oh, I see. This was like a two sentence brief from a city council meeting. That and now no people know about it. But you see, Aaron is using it as an example of Chehalis being better than Centralia in his eyes, right? As a self hating hub city resident. One town called the other to be like, hey, we know you've got a lot of garbage. Can we just add to the pile? I mean, the dump is in Centralia. Tran- mean, transfer station, I'm sorry. Do you think Tony Ketchum was like, hey, I got some tires. Uh, you mind if I <laughs> <laughs> still got that tire pile going? Oh, I can't wait for the tire pile this year. Little tire pile is going to be. I think they're going to have it here again. I hope so. I get That was the most exciting <laughs> thing to happen at downtown Centralia since she remember that 1919. GL guy sending me a late night email. I got, I got a line on a tire pile out here in GL. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you guys know about this. Oh, that was the best. Uh, any other news items you guys want to jump onto? Um, 
this isn't like uh, on the way happening, and it's already kind of been teased before, but uh, the PUD did put out a statement about trying to bring broadband into Boys Fort and up to Rainbow Falls State Park. So I think that's very exciting. Obviously, the county and several entities are looking hard at trying to get that into the rural areas for the pending and ongoing growth. So it's an interesting thing to see. Yeah, that is good. Any Schwartz, do you have anything you want to throw out there? Uh, no, I'll save it. it. Looks like we need a science banger of the week. So I'll save it for that. All right. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Jacek from Summit Funding. Here's what a recent client is saying about us. Hi, this is Chad Taylor. Have you been thinking about purchasing or refinancing your current home? The team at Summit Funding is the best in class. Looking for a conventional FHA, VA, USDA, jumbo, or even a reverse mortgage? Trust the team at Summit Funding. Corley and I did, and we couldn't be happier. Thank you to all of our past clients. If you have any questions, give us a call at 360-330-4037. All right, we're back with segments, starting with Tales from the Takes page, a.k.a. the opinion section. And first up, we've got a letter to the editor titled, When Will Centralia Repair Unsafe Sidewalks? And This is a letter about the sidewalks on Mellon and Alder Streets. I had assumed it was about the unsafe sidewalks along the north side of Harrison, which are also out of commission at a couple of intersections and are very inconvenient. You have to walk right into traffic. I don't know why they're still like that. Is this like on your running route or something? It is. <laughs> <laughs> when news personally affects you, it really just you know what? takes I, center stage. Uh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I am in you know united with this letter writer. I too. Well, this is the letter writer who wrote us, and I can't like one hundred percent confirm his claims, but he wrote us last year and said, "Hey, this specific area, like Mellon, Alder Streets, they need to you need to fix these sidewalks. Somebody's going to get hurt." And then he wrote a few weeks later that he himself had fallen and ended up in the hospital with severe injuries. And so this is his third letter. Um yeah, I mean, legal action was uh suggested at one point, but we haven't seen anything roll through the city council. Usually there's a claim for damages or something, but um yeah. This is his crusade. I appreciate him using the letter section. Uh, yeah, the intersections next to uh, the whatever the gas station by between the gas station of Burgerville and Harrison. Mm-hmm. Uh, this the corner of the sidewalks are all torn up and they're just like you know cordoned off. And then the is the next. I don't think the next one is. And then the one down by Dutch Brothers is also all torn off and just got they got like cones when it's taped off. But on that one, I think somebody just went through and like tipped them over. Mm. So, but yeah, it's been like that for a while. A couple months now. Just dump some, dump some shit in there and be done with it. I know how streets work. <laughs> <laughs> you should um, uh, run for city council. Uh, yeah. You should. Uh, no. There's been like three times in my, I guess I can call it a career, where someone has run for city council because their roads in front of their house were in bad condition. And then once they got in office in all three cases, they were like, they couldn't get it fixed right <laughs> away either. It, was just like, it got them in, but you couldn't do it. Uh, yeah, um, the, the grind of bureaucracy. We also had in Saturday's paper, I think, a commentary from Senator John Braun titled, Legislators Must Do Better in 2023 and Republicans Have a Path. He talks about safety, education, and uh, Inslee's State of the State address and felt like it fell short. And also talked about housing in an interesting way that I feel like we hadn't really had that perspective on the opinion page before, which was like, we need to stimulate the private sector to get more homes built. I thought that was interesting. Yeah, I think we're going to get uh, one of these commentaries um, frequently from Braun during the session. Um, we would not let a politician write a commentary if it was an election year, if they were running, but I think the having having the Senate minority leader be from your coverage area, um, it's a good opportunity for him to give some insights and also opinions, and then if anyone ever wants to counter those, they are welcome to do so in the letters to the editor, or even a commentary. If you want to write 500 to 700 words and have a good perspective, you could send that in. Uh, is Jim Walsh going to write a column in all caps for you? Uh, <laughs> Are you here for the common good? <laughs> and that's what it's called every time. I bet you he's updated. <laughs> I bet you he's updated his his pitch by now. That was like his pandemic era yeah, okay. stump speech. That's true. What well, makes you think any of that would change now? 
I, I don't know, because these that was that was at a rally, right? It had yeah. to been. Yeah. No one's really rallying anymore. Uh, They've forgotten how to rally. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. They're no longer here to peaceably assemble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, any other <laughs> <laughs> tales from the takes page, opinion section stuff? Uh, a couple letters in tomorrow's paper from Centralia High School students. There was a class over there that all sent them in. I don't. Isabel edited them today, so she knows it more about them than me. But I counted. There's probably 15 of them or so. I think that's about right. Yeah. Somewhere around there. So we've published those, and I will be very protective of those when it comes to commenting or, you know, letters countering. These are kids um, giving their perspective on everything from mental health to bananas. Yeah. I I really liked going through them. They made me smile and a little sad at times because they all of them were so passionate. And while some of the, like, writing was a little funny, I think, like, that made the passion more strong you could like really hear their voices in it without like being conformed to the style <laughs> even though I had to edit them I really liked reading them so it was cool I appreciate the teacher doing that too like uh, having them interact with the newspaper yeah. and um, using their first amendment rights and uh, I think that's wonderful there was one that was like it was talking about how um, I think she just didn't really feel respected by her teachers and didn't like this idea that they des- demanded respect from students but didn't always give it back or something. And um, it was like, imagine how you would feel if you hated your boss, if he pushed up every deadline and was like focused on every word you wrote in the newspaper. Like she like she was talking to the paper, you know mm. what I mean? And I was like, dang, okay. <laughs> I do feel like that. <laughs> I don't, but I'm I thought it was write really a letter. funny. <laughs> All right. Uh, People's Champion of the Week. Shahela's woman celebrates 80th birthday more than 50 years after doctors predicted her heart would fail. Uh, Best of Lewis County Hall of Famer. Grocery clerk Ken Wiseman gave us this tip about his mother, Carla, correct? Mm-hmm. Who turned 80 this weekend, more than 50 years after her diagnosis of cardiomyopathy. At the time, doctors told her she'd only live about another year, but through discipline and major advancements in medicine, she's now a great-grandmother, and we have a clip. This family probably thought I would never make it to 80, and so each birthday is a gift. Isn't that the sweetest thing? It's very good stuff. Yeah, it really makes you like uh, imagine like living like that too, being given that news, and like you would experience your entire life from that point differently than you would have otherwise, just based on that one thing. So I thought that was a cool story. I had no idea about it at all. I think you must have uh, known that one. That was your story. Yeah, Ken Wiseman messaged Jared about it. Um, They're kind of pals, and. Yeah, so they let us drop in on her birthday party on Saturday and take her photo. And she stood up and walked over. I was like, you're the 80-year-old? Like, she was so, (laughs) such a stunner, like totally straight up and with the program and great and definitely would not have guessed that was her age. So it was awesome. And her perspective was so lovely. I was really happy to get that story. Uh, Another nomination, and I'm not even a big fan, Seattle Seahawks, huh? Huh? What, they They're lost? not going to win. It's an honorary. It's an honorary thing. What a fun season, though. They did have a fun season. This them was compar- the most fun. Them with the Mariners in the similar type of fun season of like no expectations and just has it been a fun Seattle sports year? Yeah, it has been. I uh, I like where they're at. It definitely has been. It's it's a inspiring time. Every team has finished off with like some happy happy stuff. It's just made me realize it's so much more fun when they're not expected to win. Like to be a fan of someone True. than someone that's really good and expected. But it's but. also way more fun if they win. Yeah, yeah. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> uh, I think it's definitely, it's definitely, uh, it's the Shehalis woman celebrating her 80th birthday. Yeah, that's I think cool. Carla Wiseman gets this one. Uh, Sirens Banger of the Week. Schwartz, you had an exclusive? No, not an exclusive. It's just something that didn't make it in any of the other categories. Um, we had the uh, man at the Centralia uh, Pepper Tree Empress Hotel, once again, um, who pulled a knife on a hotel employee who was asking him to check out because it was well after what I imagine was the 11 a.m. checkout time. 
but uh, I don't condone pulling the knife, Please. of course. But who amongst us has not had to ask for extra time in a hotel? Pretty or am familiar, I the only one? Pretty familiar with the checkout time at the Empress, are we? <laughs> no, I, just, I think it says it in the story. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah, it says the hotel's 11 a.m. checkout time. You got an hourly rates over there, too? Have you not ever what? had to ask? I've gone down there like really sheepishly. I'm like, I can't get my shit together in the next like 30 minutes. Like, Look, I need some time. I think what Eric is trying to say is that sometimes we just need help keeping a roof over our heads. <laughs> there it and is. It's good. that's why we call the roof doctor in those times of need, because they won't just extend the amount of time that it takes to get the quote. They'll give it to you for free whenever you ask. Tell us more, Aaron. Uh, you can learn more at their website, therooftoctor.com. You can also call their Chehalis local Twin Cities office headquarters, 360-736-0246. They're a family-owned company since 1959, offering roofing, roof repair, roof cleaning, and, of course, emergency roofing. They've got locations in aforementioned Shalis, also Olympia, Tacoma, Shelton, Hoquiam, and Longview. And, uh, yeah, as I've got a little breaking news on this front for you guys. You a new review? review? I, got, I got two new reviews. Oh, oh boy. Gosh. Why uh, did you just both do Both of one? them are five stars. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, this one you're going to care about the most because I think we all hold him near and dear. Uh, Ken D. Oh, yeah. He says, mm-hmm. everyone at Roof Doctor were great to deal with, great personalities and friendly to talk to. I had a leak and they were quick to respond. Jimmy and his crew were awesome. I would recommend them for any roofing jobs. Thanks, Roof Doctor, for the excellent experience. Then I am going to read the second against your will. Because this one is from time. Christine. Mm. Oh, no who way. on January 11th said, Keith and his crew did a splendid job on my roof. Their, Keith again. Their cleanup Just was like the terrific. Christmas one. Nothing left behind. <laughs> I hope the roof was there. Accomplished in one day, <laughs> as promised. I think just didn't leave, didn't leave any trash behind. You know, my neighbor once <laughs> didn't hire the roof doctor, and they the crew, I won't name the company, but they used pressure washers to sh- like clean the roof uh-huh. directly onto my that. raspberries at my house. Also bad for the roof. I don't care about that. It, we had black tar all over the side of our house. It was a, uh-huh. it was a whole thing. Mm-hmm. Ruin the raspberries. Mm-hmm. Roof Doctor doesn't ruin raspberries. No Black way. Tar. Uh, but just to finish that, uh, yeah, they tried to get him to leave. He wouldn't leave. Uh, they got the door open, but he had the latch on. He stuck the knife through. Not the Roof Doctor. Tried to, yes. The, yeah, guy, the, the guy at the, at pepper, the, mill. At the pepper Mill. And they hauled him off. And Jared was there to document the Pe- entire pepper thing. Pepper Tree. Sorry. So. Pepper it's Tree. It's the Empress. Yeah, the Empress. Mm-hmm. It's where my parents stay when they come to town. Wow. Really? I'm going to have to. There's not a whole lot of hotels in Centralia. Think about it. I mean, La Quinta will soon be up. I La Quinta believe. will soon be up. Yep. There's the like the Oyo. Remember yeah. the old Lakeview? Like, I don't want to insult any hotel, but think like there's not a lot of great options. That hotel's actually not bad. I've stayed there. Yeah. All right. Neighborhood could be better. <sighs> yeah, that's true. Um, I'm really excited for these Facebook comments. By the way, these are funny. All Did right. A good job. It is Facebook comments of the week time. Got some. Got some bangers. Uh, on a pic of people on Spirit Lake in 1950, the first comment I enjoyed said, no fat people. The second one <laughs> said, Spirit Lake is not there since 1980 due to Mount St. Helens, or due Mount Helen was explosion. <laughs> she was then corrected as Spirit Lake very much still exists and has for 42 years since the explosion. And before. <laughs> it has just continued to exist. <laughs> I don't know how she thought the... The eruption destroyed the lake, but, you know, it's it different. Happened. Still there. Well, you can't really go up there and have, like, boats anymore because there are so many logs. It's not, like, safe to navigate. So I, maybe she was just getting that twisted. I don't know. Whatever. Well, she did later comment that she had been corrected. Okay. Good for her. Um, comments on a, a variety of the male thief stories. I just consolidated them here. The first one. 40 question mark question mark yikes she ain't aged like milk exclamation point lock her up and throw away the key damn thief exclamation point exclamation point another comment ooh tattoos I'll bet Joe Kant would love to meet her maybe she stole the Trump votes (laughs) Uh, another one I liked if any family in the area didn't get a Christmas card for us this is why promise that's the best one they sent one to everyone in the area (laughs) and it's her fault if you didn't get it Um, and then one guess her only fans Page wasn't paying enough. Okay. Cannot confirm or deny. Um, <laughs> this is on a history photo of a parade from 1957. The commenter says, I'm sorry, but where is Centralia? 
Another commenter says, where is Centralia? And her reply says, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That's, it's this nope. wild phenomenon. There is one in Pennsylvania. It's the, the town from Silent Hill. Yeah. Yeah, the one that's like been on fire There's for like 60 years. There's like four or five Centralias. <laughs> People yeah. call us to buy obits from like Illinois and other. It's, it's because these history photos are just taken off. I've been sharing history photos for like four or five years. Mm-hmm. But for whatever reason now, I put one up and it gets shared like 14,000 times. And yeah. people are following the Chronicle who have no idea who we are. Well, uh, admittedly, you've been sharing some really cool ones recently, too. I have found some, found some good ones. Yeah. yeah. So they've been sort of like on a roll. So then once one gets shared a lot, I feel like it. I don't know. But as commenters have pointed out, some of these that are like exploding, I've already shared like five times in the last five years. Like, and I just, people like them and I'd rather do something like that than no offense. Well, I guess offense McClatchy. Then I just left my thruple and I want to know how to sue my former partners. Like, (laughs) Like, I don't want to do wire if I don't have to. Just weird clickbait stuff. Uh, Also like that picture of the, People on Spirit Lake and the one of them boating on it after that, those were like the coolest things ever. I mean, people who are, people who have been around since before and after Mount St. Helens erupted, like remember what it looks like. But for me, who was not alive, I think it's like the most awesome thing. Anytime I see a picture of it, I'm like, what the heck? Like I've stood there and now I'm looking at what it used to be from yeah, that spot. Neat. Like mm-hmm. I love it. Um, let's see on a letter to the editor about extremist Republicans, the letter writer or the commenter says, I say this with concern, not criticism. Many of our rural towns are now filled with socialists whose every response is emotion based. The concept of liberty requiring personal restraint and self regulation is foreign. I just like the idea that, you know, like Morton is now filled with socialists. They're moving in, man. Oh yeah. They are. Uh, these comments came on a live video of something. One commenter says, I am so glad when I had my twins at home because the hospital sent me home, news crews didn't arrive. I don't think the medical part should be videoed. Did this go out as a disturbance first? And then we have some critical comments, so you guys may want to buckle up. (laughs) Uh, This coverage is disgusting, and the Chronicle should remove this right TF now. What an absolute violation of privacy. You should be ashamed. Another one that says, wow, this isn't premium content. I don't have to pay. What was it? Uh, a video of something in downtown Shayless, like an ambulance or something. Yeah, I think we're the only okay. newspaper that does anything with live video, and that's not like a justification, but more of I do think that there are times when we could find our footing a little bit better um, and maybe you know record a just straight up video. Um, on the other hand, I I think like if you're a TV station. You do a live video of anything, it's treated differently than if you're another type of news outlet and you do it. And that's like, I think that it's like traditional how you see the newspaper industry versus television. Um, And I do think when people see sirens and lights, they want to know what's happening and what's causing it. And if we can provide those answers, I think that we should. And um, across all our platforms, we're not just a newspaper anymore. I will say that like 80% of the time, well... I would say there's like 20% of the time when we've done live video, I've thought like maybe it would have been better to do it in this other way or if we had tweaked it or added this information, whatever. But then 80% of the time, I like the fact that even when people are critical of it, like typically most of the time what we're trying to do is tell people what's going on in a situation where they're definitely going to be asking questions, especially people who are right there and that's their community. Why is this road closed? Why are there a bunch of cops in my neighborhood? Why should I or shouldn't I like be here right now? And I think in general, like the whole point of that is like a safety thing. And it's I don't know. I I feel like there's some service to that that I appreciate, but I also understand a lot of the criticism with it. The one I always go back to is last year, the year before Jared, who's great at getting these videos. um, And most of the time people are happy to watch them um, where we had that river rescue situation on the Skookum truck where the kayaker had become stranded and they had fixed a rope across the river and the guy was coming across like, yeah, I mean, it's compelling. Uh, it's great. But in the back of my mind, I did think like, you know, if he slips and gets washed down the river, we have that on, on live. Is that right? Yeah. But I, I, I don't know that there's right or wrong, but I think like it's worth exploring it as a tool for reporting. Um, live video is here and it's something that we can utilize and we have a very large audience. So um, I think you'll continue to see it. We also do a lot of plenty of live videos that are like, 
we are here because there's a nutria oh, or yes, there yes. are some elk. And like, I mean, it's often just been a vehicle for that, but obviously we're still trying to like suss out the right stuff to have. And sometimes the thing is like, we have as much information as the public does. And the only way that we can find out more is to be there. And like, why, why would we like be there finding it out without, I think fires are a good example, like that fire you and Jared ran out to uh, last December. Is that last? Time's weird to me. Um, But people look out their window. They see a giant plume of smoke. They want to know what it is, and it's probably safer to find out from your local newspaper than to drive over there and, you know, get in the way of emergency responders. Likewise, like, the people who are responding to these scenes are being paid by your taxes. And so there's also, like, the, the fact of just, like, holding them accountable. I'm not saying like firefighters wouldn't be putting out fires or whatever, but it's also like that's part of the newspaper's role. The big question, should the Chronicle start an OnlyFans? Uh, <laughs> should it ever? <laughs> Those are for Cron lineage members only. Um, the I think the on the, as far as the live videos go, a lot of the concerns I see in the, just like reading through the comments to just to populate this section of the podcast is a lot of time it'll just be a live video with no explanation as to what's happening, and people are yeah. very concerned with that when they just see sirens or whatever, and a live video that just says, we are live, and it's like, well, but why? What what brought you here? I what did you fair. hear? There needs to be... I feel like the, it, it, would, it would assuage a lot of these concerns if there was more explanation up front. Yeah. Or something. And, you know, if it's a live video of a game, tell them the damn score. Multiple times. They get very upset when the first comment is, well, what's the score? They get upset if you don't tell them the score when they immediately start watching it, even if, like, 10 minutes earlier it's been said, like, 12 times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Another comment on the cop in Washington getting caught having sex on his body cam on duty. Commenter says, Roger, we got a 69 in progress. Turn on the body cam, Jimmy. Boop, boop, pull her over. Oh, gosh. I'm so glad I don't look at the comments most days. And finally, on a history photo of Shahela's comment, he says, my ex-lover came to me and apologized for the wrongs he did and all the mistakes he made and promised never to do it again. Ever since then, everything has returned back to normal. Thank you for saving my broken relationship. I will forever be grateful to you, sir. It's so hot right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anytime you can make use of that sound, I'm, I'm happy. I actually have one more comment that I didn't bring up for the comments last week. I did send it to you, though, Aaron. Mm-hmm. Um, we were talking about Old Man Transalta bringing us that uh, Makers, and I, yeah. I foolishly, foolishly uh, started talking about how the guy who, or gal, I don't know who it is, somebody uh, sent us the, I don't know what the, what the booze is called, but I, I think I called it poison. <laughs> like, you called it that. I, know. I That's what I said. I, I said I. Anyways, on that podcast, the commenter said, Eric Schwartz, you should know by now the role of a critic is much more important than the role of a fan. You are welcome to the Bayhu. It's spelled B-A-I-J-U. I don't know how to pronounce it. Which I am sorry your weak editorial constitution <laughs> <laughs> felt was too challenging for the palate you developed. I can't even read this. It's so spot on. <laughs> I'm going to start that up. Which I am sorry your weak editorial constitution felt was too far too challenging for the palate you've developed by constantly guzzling fried frozen potatoes <laughs> and canned nacho cheese at O'Blarney's. And who is this person and how do they know me so well? Oh my That's God. That's all I want to know. Is this you? Is is this your burner account? That is no. so funny. It's spot I like, on. I only eat nachos and uh, beer buddies. Beer buddies. buddies. Yeah, like, like, that's, that's it. All, yeah, that's this it. This person knows me, clearly. Um, yeah, I enjoyed that Maybe comment Maybe it's your well. wife. Yeah. It's, yeah, Heather has secretly been trolling you and sent it a bottle of... But he, uh, at the same time, this person makes a good post. It's like we're, critics, fans. Like I worded that very poorly. I said, this guy's not a fan and he was trying to poison us or something like it that. It would be and, terrible yeah. if our listeners were only fans. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> I see what you did there. <sighs> Enough um, about it. What, uh, what's in the next edition? Something about health board legislation? It's always best to ask Isabel what she's working on when that question is posed. Uh, there's an Isabel story linked here. Yeah. Um, I wrote about Lewis County's qualms with um, health board legislation that passed in 2021 while they were um, appointing new members to the uh, Public Health and Social Services Advisory Board. So the subhead of that story is after uh, 2021 law passed, the county chose to keep an all-elected board of health structure rather than add 
uh, medical professionals well, like the law you need encourage doctors on them your board to of do. Health? Right. So they fall under um, a very like specific criteria in the RCW that says because they have that advisory board, um, you know, the one they listen to all the time, that they can keep the structure as it is. So they kind of suss through that and talk about it. And it took me like a couple of days to get the background all sorted together on this. But I think people might find it interesting just to sort of hear the reasoning on why they're operating the way they do, et cetera. Yep, that's in the paper. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of what we talked about today is in the paper. I mean, you'll find the the story on the alleged male thief in there, as well as the alleged hotel knife wielder and who just needed alleged. another 30 minutes. And the not alleged Carla Wiseman. Yes, yep, that, that'll that be our front page story, so good stuff. Oh, and TikTok. And TikTok, yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, can't can't wait to... To hear that. Emily's working on a story about, it might actually be posted here pretty soon, on a uh, like a home for sex offenders from McNeil Island that's going to be locating near Tonino, mm-hmm. um, which we've known about. We've shared some about it on Facebook, but I think it got a bit elevated today. We had uh, John Braun uh, and another lawmaker issue pretty long statements on it um, and why they think it's a bad idea, at least process-wise. Um, because it's supposed to be built, I think, in February. It's going to be occupied in February. But anyways, look out for that as well. There's been a big, like, Facebook page asking a bunch of people to join that says something about um, just, like, community members being upset about it. And I think there was a possible protest upcoming. There will probably be a live video on that. The Stone City Home for Sexual Deviants. We'll just Mm. say, there are people in a room and we are live. <laughs> <laughs> it's just going to say, Take sex offenders. <laughs> uh, in closing, we're sponsored. I can say we will have the story. I just noticed Emily dropped it, so I'll, I'll post that when I go You want to read it live? <laughs> uh, let's see how long this thing is. Edit it, edit it no, live? No, no, it's definitely a reader. Okay. Uh, in closing, we're sponsored by Summit Funding and The Roof Doctor. Leave a review and rating on Apple Podcast if you want, or send an email to eschwartz at cronline.com yeah, go news at cronline.com it's easier to remember tell them if you're a fan or a critic <laughs> makes no difference to me thanks for listening